I spent $1,800 in fees on Coinbase Pro in 2020. Now, this is with a fee rate of 0.4% on average per transaction, which is still a lot lower than the 1.49% that we see on regular Coinbase. So those are the fees here. Now, I just made a video on Voyager and how bad the fees were, but I didn't show the math because I did all the math in my head, which is why in this video, I'm going to show you the math. Here is the math. And I'm going to have this Excel sheet available in the description where you can download it. You can check my math, but I'm just here to show you that Voyager can have fees that are 30 times higher than Binance. Do you want to pay hundred dollars in fees or do you want to pay $3,000 in fees? That's the difference of 30 X. So that's why it's really important to be aware of how you're spending your money, how much you're paying in fees, how often you're trading and all of this adds up for me that was eighteen hundred dollars in just one of many exchanges so if you want the lowest fees possible you're going to want to be on an exchange with the lowest rates and that would be binance and kucoin and then a couple more that come in close after that a few of these i haven't thoroughly went through i looked up the available fees but i have used binance and kucoin and your best bet is Binance because it has the highest volume. So you're going to get the lowest spreads, which pretty much give you the best rates. KuCoin has less volume, but still very low rates. And you don't need to go through the KYC process if you're trading less than $2,000 per day. And all you need is a phone number. U.S. residents aren't supposed to go through the KYC process, but you can get an account and start trading. There is a difference between Binance US and Binance.com. US is for US users. Binance.com is way more powerful with a lot more options for everyone else in the world. So here is my chart of the fees you can experience on all types of exchanges. I'm going to go into more depth in another video about the best exchanges and how to use them, how to set them up. But for now, this list should be very helpful for anyone that wants to by cryptocurrency with very low rates. Now there is a maker and taker fee. Maker just means a limit order when you put a limit buy order or a limit sell order. Taker is a market order. Anytime you market buy or sell, this is the fee you're going to be paying. And it's pretty much the same for most of these. When you take a look at these fees, 0.1% and 0.13% doesn't seem like a big difference but it is, it's a 30% difference. It's like saying, do you want to pay $10,000 in fees or do you want to pay $13,000 in fees? Now I know this is a really high number that not a lot of people would actually pay, but you just have to kind of put it in, pers in perspective. 30% is a lot. And you're gonna want the most competitive rate with the highest volume, which is why Binance is your best bet. I know you're going to probably say I'm a Binance shill. I'm going to give out a Binance referral. And yes, you can say that. Try it out. I do have an affiliate link. I'm honestly saying it has the lowest rates and you're going to save the most money. You're going to get full value. Now, moving on to this next column I've made here, it's what happens when you buy a thousand dollars at a market order. Basically, you'd get nine hundred ninety nine dollars in coins. And then at the low end here with Voyager at fees as high as 3%, you'd get $970 worth of coins. Now, if you sell your coins, basically you buy $1,000 worth of coins and then you sell it immediately, this is how much money you'd be left with. With Binance and KuCoin and Poloniex, you're gonna save a lot more money on that side of the, of the chart than with Voyager. And on a per trade fee for every $1,000, you're paying $1 up here and then with the Voyager you're paying $30. Now the Voyager just to give them a fair shot their rates do vary depending on what coin you're selling what coin you're buying or selling and what the rate is. So right here I wrote out a couple of the coins with the bid and ask spread. This is a dynamic excel sheet so you can see up here it's all calculated you can put in these numbers, you can download these Excel, you can download this Excel sheet, you can play around with these numbers and see if the math works out. Now, later in this video, 
I'm going to buy and sell $100 worth of Dogecoin so you can see how much I'm left with as actual evidence of how much you're paying in fees on a very expensive exchange like Voyager. Down here, yes, the spread is very high while on Kraken and Binance, it's pretty much the same number. Like there is no spread on a bigger exchange. So even though Voyager is commission free, they are rolling in very high fees. Now I did try making a limit order on Voyager and that never went through. That's later in this video. Time code's in the description. So down here, I bought $1,000 worth of Dogecoin. I sold it and how much I would have paid in fees. So the numbers really should speak for itself. What happens when you buy and sell $1,000 worth of Dogecoin? Here, you're paying a dollar per trade and and these fees are all per trade. So if you buy and sell, you pay 0.1% every time, you pay 0.26% every time with Kraken, you pay 3% every time, depending on what Voyager feels like charging you. That's why I had to make another uh, video on Voyager fees that better explained the fees since I did a bad job explaining it and I got really negative feedback from it. So this video is to save anyone that wants to learn how to save fees, money. Basically, I'm here to save you money and not to help Voyager make more money off you as well as these other exchanges. Basically, you're gonna wanna stay in the 0.1% trading fee area. That's why in this chart, it explains like if you're buying Bitcoin, the trade fee ranges about 0.623%, which is still much higher than 0.1. For Doge, it's 3%, which is 30 times higher than Binance. For Uniswap, that's 1.2%. Well, that's 0.1% on Binance and KuCoin. I know I'm, I'm uh, shilling another exchange, but it has the lowest fees and you'll be saving the most money. The more you get into cryptocurrency, the more likely you'll start trading more as you follow news, you follow trends, you follow shifts in the market which is very addicting and causes you to trade a lot and perhaps overtrade, which is why you want to pay the lowest amount in fees that you possibly can. So more on this chart. Uh, yeah, you can download it, you can use it. And all you have to do is input the bid and ask numbers in Voyager, and then it's going to calculate the spread for you. It's going to show you the fee per trade. It's going to show you the dollar amount. This is based on every thousand dollars you would buy. So this just, potentially gives you the amount in fees. So all you have to do is fill out these two columns for the bid amount and the ask amount for whatever coin you want. So Binance is available for a lot of people, but you'll have to go through the verification process, which can take a long time because a lot of people want to get into cryptocurrency right now. With KuCoin, there is a KYC process but you really don't need to go through it if you're gonna trade less than $2,000 a day and withdraw less than five Bitcoin. All you need is a phone number to sign up to verify your identity, and it could be a US phone number, which is why if you just wanna get started into cryptocurrency and you already have Voyager or some other exchange, just any way you can get money into the crypto space, I would suggest buying USDT or USD coin a stable coin that is supported by KuCoin and then sending that over from, let's say Voyager or Coinbase or Kraken, Gemini, and sending it over to KuCoin through a stable coin. And then from there, you can start doing your trading for a lot less than you are now. Yeah, that, that's just basically how you do it. For me, I use Coinbase that's connected to my bank. I mostly do the trading on Coinbase Pro, which has lower fees, but not the lowest. I'm pretty much on average, it's 0.4% for me, which is four times higher than what I'm paying on Binance. But I still like diversifying my crypto, which everybody should do. You should not have all your money in one place. Yeah, and if you haven't seen my tips on how to keep your cryptocurrency safe, definitely watch that video. It should be enlightening. So on Voyager, your limit sells don't appear in the order book, which is kind of crazy because they add fees to your order. Now, this is irritating because other exchanges don't do this. And it's a part of the reason why I hate Voyager and I'm just here to save you money. So let me demonstrate the order not appearing. 
So we're gonna make a limit sell for $20.30. As you can see, the ask price is $20.48, so our order should appear in the order book. So we're gonna sell one Uniswap at $20.30. Gonna slide that. And as you can see, the ask price is still $20.46. Did my order fill? No, it did not. So that just says, hey, these orders are not appearing in the order book. There is a huge disparity in the price. Yeah, if people are asking for about $19.94, I put a limit sell of $20.30. The ask price is $20.47. And my order is not in the order book. This is not a good broker. You say you have 12 exchanges. None of them are showing my order because you're inflating it with extra fees. See, my limit order is still open. The price is going up. The ask price is $20.54. My limit order of $20.30 is still open. So as you can see, the price is fluctuating to about 30 cents over my ask price and my order is still not appearing which goes to show everybody that there are very high hidden fees on this exchange or this wallet, whatever you call it, a broker. Either way, you're getting less for your money. So right now it says the price is 2038, 2042. My limit order is still open at $20 and 30 cents. It's just not, it's just not going through. I don't even want to sell this because it's still doing well and making money, but I want this order to go through just to show you that Voyager is inflating prices or their limit order system doesn't work and they only want you to use market orders because it makes them a lot of money. And then right now I want to get $100 in my account just so I can show you how much you get in coins when you buy and sell $100 on Voyager because some people need to be shown these fees and I have to lose money just so I can show you these fees. Now, I'm not shilling for anything else. This is just an honest review of how you're being ripped off because a lot of people did not like my last video. They are very mad. It's kind of like I attacked their mother, I insulted their mother and they are very mad and they are defending Voyager Exchange. For myself, that's fine. You don't have to like my videos. I'm just here to try and save you money. So let me show you how much you get with $100 on Voyager. We're gonna buy Doge because I saw it had a huge price gap and I need to buy Doge just to show you how much you're losing in money. So the fees do vary from coin to coin and you have to check on that. Now, I really don't like exchanges like this because they're just hiding these fees and they're taking advantage of new customers who aren't aware of this, which makes me very mad and it should make you mad too. Let's do this. We're gonna buy $100 of Doge, $100 exactly. That just got us 2,100 Doge. I now own 2,106 Doge at a value of $97.22. Now, the market price they have here at 0 0.046, that's kind of like the middle point between their ask and bid price. What you really have is the bid price, the lower amount. So I'm gonna sell my $100 of Doge that I just bought and we'll see how much that gets me. So 2,106, $94. So I just turned $100 into $94.44, which is like 2.8% in fees. I'll have the actual numbers right here calculated, but that's very, very high. 2.8% in fees compared to 0.1% with Binance. Here, here are some other exchanges. So by comparison with Binance at 0.1% compared to 2.8%, that's 28 times higher. You're paying 28 times more in fees to this exchange and it's taking advantage of you. I pretty much made this video because my last video did not explain very well how high the fees were. A lot of people thought I was just criticizing them just to criticize them. No, they just have very high fees and you should be using a platform that has lower fees. So I do have referral links. This is me shilling. I'm absolutely admit admitting it. I am incentivized for you to sign up for Binance and KuCoin. For Binance.com, I am giving you a referral link that gets you 10% off your trades, which means your orders will be 
0.09% instead of 0.1%. That lowers your trading fees even more. Now, all of this money adds up and I really think you should keep track of it just so you're aware how much you're trading and how much you're paying in fees. It took me a while to generate a Coinbase report and look at all my fees for 2020. So these are all the transactions and they, they just add up. So sometimes I just trade there because it's easy, but uh, yeah, I have several accounts <laughs> with uh, a lot of other exchanges and you know, everything is split up. I know they say don't leave your money on exchanges, but it depends on what you're doing with it, how you're securing your money and these exchanges are insured and will do a better job in some cases. Now I know that too is a split decision between people in the crypto space, but a lot of people say keep your crypto keys and don't hold it on an exchange, but that's because of the days of Mt. Gox. They weren't insured and they lost so many people's money. With crypto exchanges these days being insured in the event of a hack on an exchange, they're insured and in, in the event of a hack on your specific account, you're not insured. So with that, I hope uh, you'd consider using my referral link. I hope you also consider liking this video because I'm really here looking out for your fees and making sure you don't pay a lot of money to exchanges unnecessarily. Now there, I don't have any loyalty to any exchange. This is Full Value Dan where we get full value for everything and what matters is how much you have at the end of the day rather than being taken advantage of of a company or someone else shilling a coin. I just want to give realistic expectations and perspectives from someone who's been in the space for a while and has been scammed and burnt many times in the past, which is why I've learned a lot. With that, I hope you got your full value for today.